two previous workshops. There are four more budget meetings, two in August and two in September. The two in August, we will have your capital plan and we will have all your budgets again. Uh, and then the two in September are public hearings uh, for the public to uh, express their uh, views and points of views on the budget. Today we're here to set the tentative maximum millage rate. The proposed general fund maximum millage rate of 6.95 mills represents a decrease from the prior year's millage rate of 0.169 mills, which is a 2.276% decrease over the prior year. That represents a 2.61% uh, above the rollback rate of 6.773 mills. The proposed voted debt service maximum millage rate of 0.2932 mills represents a decrease from the prior year uh, rate of 0.012 mills which is a 3.93% decrease over prior year. The total decrease is 0.1739 mills, which is 2.344% total decrease uh, combined millage rate next year over current year. Once the City Council sets the maximum tenant millage rate, it may be decreased as council moves through the budget process, however, it may not be increased. Uh, your options are to um, set the tentative maximum millage rates as uh, suggested by city staff, which support a balanced budget, uh, or to do something different. Staff is recommending that you set the tentative maximum millage rates as proposed to meet the current balance budget. And back to you. Well, thank you, Mr. Curry. And could you go ahead and tell the audience now before I open it up for them to speak, could you let them know about the uh, well, services at the, at the tentative, uh, what you have proposed? Are we going to have the same services? Are we going to be lacking on anything? Uh, can you just let us know that? So. Sure. They proposed um, millage rates support a balanced budget that was based on council's goals. Those goals included a number of things that were presented at the last budget workshops. For example, we are increasing road paving. So the budget currently supports uh, improved and expanded road paving program. It doesn't quite meet the total needs uh, of the community based on the um, uh, report that was done on all the roads, but it's more than the prior year. It also includes looking at um, senior services uh, and expanding those um, and maintaining all other levels of service uh, as they currently are provided to the citizens. So there's a few uh, increases uh, to the budget related to paving roads, uh, some senior services, and things of that nature that were presented at the last budget workshop and that we'll go over again um, at the uh, um, four budget meetings. Okay, thank you. And before I open this up for the public where we have the sub request to speak, I'm going to ask the council members if they have any questions of Mr. Drury at this time. Um, I think that's better so they can hear what our thoughts are before they come up to speak. So Amanda? I have one question. So I know last year when we were doing the closed budget, you indicated how much of the cost would be reduced to change that the cost per person. Do we have that for the next budget meeting? Yes. Yes, we can. I don't have any questions at this time. Uh, Mr. Drury and I have already spoken about this. So. Okay. So with that, I'm going to uh, let my request to speak from the audience. So my first one came in from Mr. Don Kerr. 
uh, come on up. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to speak your piece. Gosh, I was hoping for three. Um. <laughs> it's a long story. Thank you, um, Madam Vice Mayor and Council. My name is Don Kerr, 16833 Deer Island Road. I'm representing the Shirley Shores Community Group LLC. And I'm thrilled to see that you're proposing a reduction in mill rates. Uh, I'm very happy to see that. The way I look at this, millage rate is all about taxation. So I'm going to read something. The amount needs to be enough to provide government with funds to run, but it needs to be balanced by the burden of taxes being fair to the citizens. So I'm questioning, is this rate fair? I'm going to give you a quick test case and only one. I live in a small subdivision. We have seven homes, and one of our homes sold last week. It sold for $515,000. This house was needs a gut rehab. It has no plumbing in it right now. It has no kitchen, etc. So this buyer is prepared to spend quite a bit of money renovating this home. I'm guessing he's going to have at least $600,000 in, in the home, so that's what I'm using as my basis. Um, when he applies for a building permit, he has to do that now at the county because this is in the um, ISBA area outside the city limits. When he does that, he will be told that because he's within 1,000 feet of the sewer system or 300 feet of the water system, he has to hook up to those things. That's part of the program. So he has to come to the city of Tiberias. The city of Tiberias will then ask him to support a covenant in support of the annexation agreement, which is a, says he is voluntarily agreeing to be annexed in the city. So what does this mean? In terms of cost for him, his hard cost to get connected, I estimate at over $35,000. That includes impact fees, physical work, etc. that has to be done for him to hook up. Uh, so $35,000 initially. Plus, uh, at a proposed, at your currently proposed millage rate, and I apologize, I ran this at the 7.119, I was unaware of the reduction, it is over $4,000 increase to this individual for taxes each year for property taxes. It is, he also is going to have a new water and sewer bill, a couple grand a year, uh, so his new increase is going to be over $6,000. His new taxes for this property are going to be over $13,000 a year. The property is currently taxed. The tax rate is about $4,000. So he thinks he's going to have a $4,000 tax bill. He's really going to have a $13,000. So what is all of these taxes going to earn this individual? Is he getting better roads? Is he getting better fire protection? Is he getting better law enforcement? My understanding of the ISBA says they're all going to stay the same. So is this fair to this taxpayer? Now, this individual doesn't know anything about this right now, so he's coming into this kind of blindsided. And one of the reasons is that in the ad for the property, it read, this is in the unincorporated county, so there's no city to various tax. So this guy is clueless as to what he has purchased because the realtor probably didn't understand what it means. So here's, my, I'm going to stop. My, I, I believe this is sort of taxation without representation. Um, this guy doesn't have a chance to vote. On any of these items because technically he doesn't live in the city, yet he's having to live with all of the city's rules and regulations for taxation. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. And then we'll have Mr. Jury address that when we'll we go ahead and have the next person speak. Um, Vance, go on. So again, remember, this meeting is to set the maximum potential village rate. Yes. Just to remind you. And the city of Mignola allows people to speak five minutes. Well. Uh, yeah, Vance Yoakum, 12619 Milwaukee Avenue, uh, Tavares. And uh, I, as, as you know, I write a fiscal livestock blog. I just want to bring up fiscal issues. I want to give more transparency because Right now, because of ADA, there's hardly anything on the website. Um, and, uh, but I've been looking around, and uh, one thing I just want to bring up and let you know, because I, I don't think that comparative analysis is done very well in all the cities when the city councils look at their millage rates or taxes. But I went over to the property tax appraiser site, and first of all, I checked his tax uh, calculator. And for a $200,000 house with a homestead, 
a person in Lake County Unincorporated is paying about $1,930 a year in taxes. But if he, uh, if you put in Tavares, it goes up to $774. So then the issue is, and that's about $64 a month. So the issue is, for somebody that's got a $200,000 house, are they getting $64 more value than they are in the county? And that's a question that I think you need to ask yourself. And I know you do a lot of great things. I enjoy, as I said, coming to them because I don't have to pay for them. I'm not in Tavares. But, uh, and so you have a lot of different uh, uh, things that go on, but uh, sometimes I wonder whether the city should be doing it or instead create, you create incentives for, uh, instance, uh, private uh, business owners to run some of the festivals and things more than you do now. Uh, but in looking at the comparison, the list of the adopted rates for 2018, which is the latest one off of that appraiser's website, uh, among all the cities, uh, you're one of the top four in millage rates, uh, and you're proposing you're at seven, just a little over seven mills now, and you're thinking they're going down just a little slight bit. But then if you look at that list, Lady Lake is at like 3.3 mills, Leesburg is at 4.26, uh, Montverde, which amazes me, is 2.8, and uh, so again, are you giving people that are residents here um, proper value for the money? Or is it that over a period of time we've had what they call um, amenity creep? Kind of like a hotel where keep adding things to in the hotel rooms, and of course they increase the rates. And then maybe you've been adding so many things, and you mean all the city council going back for years, adding a lot of features that are fun and nice and everything else, but, uh, you know, I mean, for instance, uh, the, the uh, pavilion, you're not even paying for the bond debt. It's $200,000 a year, and there's no business in the world that would be able to rent a place and not have to pay for their facility. And so I just like to say that you need to look at things like this, and you've got to go through, I mean, a soul-searching on whether you really are providing value versus, say, the county or some of those other cities. Thank you. All right, thank you, Vance. And I'm going to let Mr. Jeremy respond to some of your questions <coughs> if I could. Oh, no, come on. Let's let somebody else do it. You <laughs> drop something down. Okay. Uh, sure, on the first speaker, he's correct that um, Lake County Health Department does have a law that uh, says if your septic tank fails, um, that she can be within a thousand feet of a sewer uh, line. You need to connect to the sewer line. And the city of Tiberias has a law that says if you want to connect to sewer or water in the city, you must annex into the city uh, and pay your fair share of taxes. So he is correct on that, uh, and there's a tax associated with that. Uh, the second was, are, are you getting um, you know, uh, adequate services from the city? I, I can tell you that from my perspective, there would be no hospital here. Uh, many people in Lake County use the hospital. The hospital would not be here if it was not for the city. There would be no medical offices and doctor's offices uh, without the city. The city accommodated all of that with water, sewer, annexations, uh, and working with them. We work very hard for new publics. Most of Lake County use that new publics. There would be no publics here. There would be no restaurants in the downtown. There would not be a library. There would not be parks. There would not be recreation. There would be ball fields for children. Quite frankly, this city has done an, a, a, an amazing amount, in my view, of services from police, fire, um, hotels, None of that, none of that would exist because Lake County, unincorporated Lake County doesn't do that. They don't get into that business. Uh, they don't have water, they don't have sewer, they can't do it. So the city of Tiberias has been providing not only the citizens of Tiberias, but allow Lake County residents with shopping, with safety from, um, the, and, and wellness to the hospitals and all of that. The other thing we do is we back up Lake County. Lake County cannot handle the fire needs or all the police needs. We have mutual aid both on fire and police, and we are constantly backing up Lake County Fire Department 
We are always working with the police department. So, yes, if you live in the city, you're paying taxes. If you live in the county, you're not paying city taxes. But if you live in Lake County, you are using Tiberi's amenities, and Tiberi's taxpayers are paying for it. And from time to time, there'll be people annexing in. Um, you know, Florida uh, is a growth state. Um, it's uh, a state where you're seeing a lot of the orange groves and the blueberry fields and the cattle fields being turned into orange groves. So I look at where I live, my whole division, subdivision was an orange grove. It's a housing uh, development now. Bay Street, uh, Royal Harbor. Uh, it's a changing uh, uh, landscape. And so if you live uh, next to an orange grove or a blueberry uh, field or, or something of that nature, it may change in the future. Uh, because that's uh, Florida, the way Florida has been growing. If you live in a current subdivision or in a downtown urban area, it's probably not going to change that much. Uh, what you see is what you get. So as far as um, are you getting the amenities that you're paying for, um, I live in the city. I think I am. My daughter was born in the hospital here. She had amazing service. Uh, I love the restaurants. I go to the special events. Uh, I can call a police officer. Uh, my mother fell down in my house. The fire department there was, was there within two minutes taking care of her. Um, we get good service here, in my view. Uh, we pay for it. I enjoy it. I'll keep paying for it. Our goal is to have a reasonable tax rate and good services. Uh, and I would put this city up against any other city when it comes to um, the service levels that we have. Cultural, library, safety, Hospital, we got it all. I mean, we really do. That's my response. <laughs> all right, thank you, Mr. Gray. He's so good. <laughs> okay, and just so y'all understand, because I don't want y'all to think I didn't give you time to speak, no. this meeting's purpose was to set no the, the millage rate, the, the maximum tentative millage rate. So, what I'm going to ask you to do once that's set, uh, now you can. Do your homework. Right. Now you know where we're at and what we, what, where you'd like to see us. And we welcome the public to come in and give us their ideas of how they think we could reach that lower rate. Uh, what would they be willing to give up? I mean, but don't you just think what you want to give up? You've got to go out there to the public and talk to your neighbors. <laughs> and, well, you know, this is where it's going to be. If we want it lower, what would you be willing to give up? Bring that back to us. We'd love to hear it. So. But both of y'all, I mean, I appreciate y'all, y'all's input. I really, really do. Just let's get this set so you know what you're working, what you're working with. All right, council. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and say, even though you didn't fill out the papers, is there anybody else in the audience that would like to come up and say anything? Hey. Hey, I should have filled out this paper. <laughs> Denise Lorada, uh, Royal Harbor. I find it very disappointing that people who don't live in this city come and criticize this city. The people who live here are obviously willing to pay the taxes because they chose to live here. And when anyone makes a choice to live no matter where they live, they should do their homework. They should find out everything they might be responsible for and make the decision before they move in. So I think it's, um, well again, it's very disappointing to people who don't live here be against what Tavares is doing, and yet at the same time they enjoy everything that Tavares is paying for. Perhaps maybe they shouldn't come to Tavares and not use all of our services that the residents are paying for. Thank you. Good point. Thank you, Ms. Lerada. Response? I'm going to let you. I usually don't, but there's so <laughs> few of us, and I'd really like to have everyone's input, but we're not going to go back and forth. Thank you. I don't mind you responding to that. But 30 seconds. Okay. And I appreciate the comment that's valid and it makes sense. Um, I'm a, as a lot of you know, I'm a graduate architect and land planner. Before we moved here, I did exactly that. I researched thoroughly what were my opportunities, what were my costs, and what would happen. And in all, I went to the county, because that's where I live, and I had two meetings. I can give you dates, times, who I talked with. And what I received for information, there was not a whisper of information that I existed in something called an ISDA and that I would be added to the city of Tavares at some point in time, but no end. 
and my realtor didn't cover that, no one covered it. That's a pretty big stretch for someone coming from outside to understand and to know. So once again, my request is, and I don't think it's unreasonable, the request is, since I am going to be in the city of Tiberias, and I'm reasonably active in what's going on, why can't we expand the voter rolls so that I can vote? And that I understand from the county uh, uh, elections board, that's a fairly simple thing to do. All you have to do is change the codes for, for their issuing ballots to say we're including these codes. That's my request. Thank you. Yeah, I think our charter doesn't allow us to do that. Is that correct? Yeah, our charter doesn't allow us. We wouldn't have to go in and change the charter. But anyway, okay, so we're going to close public input. So now we're going to go with council uh, deliberation. Amanda, we'll start with you. Well, I'm fine with what the Maxwell Military is, and I know that Kirby and Troy both do the same before they left town. So I think that's a good place to start with the Maxwell. And then we can always work it back if we find something we want to cut. Mr. Steverson. Um, I've had discussions with staff about this. I've met with the finance director, I've met with the city administrator. Uh, I feel comfortable uh, at this point, based upon everything that we've discussed and what I've heard here tonight, uh, or this afternoon, I should probably say. Uh, I'm ready to move forward. I don't have much more to say about this. Yes, and I think all of us would love to be able to, be able to go to the rollback rate. I mean, that would be... We all would love to do that. The problem is, I think we're going to be cutting a lot of things that people have gotten used to, or some true necessities, you know, safety necessities, just a lot of things. And I think what you fail to understand, so to, in order to get the same money that we got the year before, so you have the rate roll back. The problem is, everything else goes up. So it's hard to go back to the rollback rate to the exact same money that you got the year before because fuel's gone up, insurance has gone up, uniforms, paper, ink, electricity, everything continues to go up. So it's very, very hard. I mean, we would love, there's nothing I'd love more than to say, we're going to go all the way to the rollback rate. And every year I wish we could do that and I never see a way. But I'm going to have to agree with everyone else. I think as a starting point, we were presented, we were presented a, a balanced budget with a tentative bill. I mean, they gave us a millage rate that would cover, and we have a balanced budget. So I think that's a great place to start. And now we're all going to start doing our homework and and really work on this and see if we can get it down any further. But I'm going to agree with the rest of the council. I'm fine at this starting point, and I hope that we can whittle some down. So do I hear a motion? And I think we're all one of the debt service rate the same. Okay. Yes. So I'll make a motion that we set the maximum tenant mill rate at six point nine five mills and the voted maximum tenant voted debt mill rate at zero point two nine three two mills. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes three to zero. And with that. This meeting is adjourned.